Le ministre des enseignements secondaires a développé une plateforme d'enseignement à distance pour les élèves du secondaire au Cameroun. Une série d'enseignements dispensés par les enseignants de qualité pour les élèves du secondaire. Apprendre n'a jamais été aussi simple avec l'enseignement à distance. Une initiative du ministère des enseignements secondaires sous la supervision du professeur Nalova Lyonga en collaboration avec le ministère des Postes et Télécommunications, la CAMTEL, la CIRTV et l'UNESCO. Nous introduisons l'enseignement à distance comme une autre méthode d'enseignement et d'apprentissage qui diffère du cadre de classe traditionnel auquel vous êtes habitué. Dans le mot d'enseignement à distance, vous n'êtes pas avec l'enseignant en personne, alors prenez votre temps, détendez-vous, écoutez l'enseignant, prenez des notes et visitez les liens suivants pour toutes questions ou réponses à vos préoccupations. Allez-y à votre rythme la solution du Cameroun contre le Covid-19 est au-delà. Professeur Nalova Lyonga, ministre des enseignements secondaires. Welcome to this learning session with me, Koki Christopher, your teacher of physics. Today we shall be studying physics in form 1 and we are going to start by correcting the assignments that we had in the last lesson. So here we have the questions a piece of metal of mass 57 grams is submerged in a measuring cylinder partially filled with water as shown in the diagram below we're going to see the diagram what is the density of the metal so mass and uh, we need to look for the volume from the diagram that we're going to see and then calculate density of the metal okay so this is the diagram from the last lesson if you followed up if you did not you are free to stop this video and go back to the previous uh, video of lesson 22 and see exactly what we did there about measurement of the volume of a liquid and measurement of the volume of an irregular shaped uh, solid so we have had the mass here, the volume of the liquid alone, and then the volume of the liquid plus uh, a substance in it. So, our expected response, the initial volume, V1, is 17 milliliters. The final volume, after the substance is immersed in it, we have a new volume, V2, which is 20 milliliters. As I explained in the previous lesson, here we have the outcome. I explained here so they can follow up. And as I encourage at the beginning of uh, most of the lessons that I present, that you have writing material like you need a pen, a piece of paper or a book, a calculator and a ruler if need be so that you can follow up and understand. Okay, so the purpose of these two readings is to help us calculate uh, the volume that we need to do our calculation with that we obtain by subtracting the initial volume from the final volume. In this case, it is uh, 20 minus 17, V2 minus V1, and the result is three, three milliliters. That's the volume. And with that, we can then proceed to look for density, which is what we're asked to calculate. Don't forget, don't get tired of writing down the formula. You always need it, and even when you get to Form 5, you have to write the GCE, you are rewarded for correctly stating uh, the formula and using it, okay? So here, mass by volume, and uh, we saw our mass as 57, volume as 3 milliliters, and then it will give us 19 grams per milliliters, which is the same thing as 19 grams per cubic centimeters, okay? So our focus today is on lesson 23 and uh, we shall be looking at measurements of temperature. Okay? Temperature. Take note. So uh, here is a plan for the lesson we are going to follow. We are going to look at the objectives for the lesson, the prerequisites, real life situation or lesson activities exercises which i have a summary of the lesson 
and then an assignment for you to take home and test to see if you have understood what we are out for. So, prerequisites to measure temperature. What do we need to be familiar with? Okay? Hot and cold bodies. You should know what hot bodies are, cold bodies are, scale division. And in a short while, you shall understand why I'm saying all of this, okay? So, by the time that we are running out of this lesson, or we are finishing with this lesson, there are some things that uh, I expect you to do. One of them is to define temperature and state its unit. There are two things, define and state. Define temperature, state its unit. So defining only is not what I want. Staying the unit only is not what I want. So there are two, you must define temperature and state its unit. Secondly, state of which instruments can be used to measure, uh, to accurately measure temperature because there are ways of estimating temperature, but there is a way to accurately determine temperature. So state which instruments. I know that by now you must have had an idea in your mind already about the instruments, but which we shall still get to it. So by the time we get to oh, the end of the lesson, you should be, be able to do that. Okay, use a liquid in glass thermometer to correctly measure the temperature of a body. To test the prerequisites. How does it feel when an object is put in the refrigerator for one or that is put in the refrigerator for one day is touched. Have you ever tried that? To put an object in the fridge for about a day and then you touch it with your hand. How do you feel? Okay? You can write down your feeling and let's see what happens in the moment. Uh, determine the smallest scale division in the diagram below. Scale division. Okay? Uh, like you have your ruler, you may have something like your ruler. What is the smallest scale division? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this distance? Is it uh, this one? Is it this one? You have to look at things like this and identify which is the smallest scale division and hopefully go uh, some steps further to check what does this represent, okay? So determine the smallest scale division in the diagram below. This is the diagram, okay? Look at this point, look at this, count how many subdivisions are here, or what's the difference? C calculate the smallest, or determine the smallest scale division. Scale division, okay? So how does it feel when an object that is put in the refrigerator for one day is touched? What do you write? It feels cold. When I do that, I feel cold. When I touch an object from the fridge that's been there for long, it feels cold. What about you? Do you feel the same? Okay. This is the smallest scale division from the diagram below, and we saw the diagram. So how do you go about having the smallest scale division? We take a look at like we have the smallest, here is zero and the highest is, anyway, not highest, but we're taking here 10, zero, 10. So we take the difference between 10 and zero, then divided by the number of divisions. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So over 10, and that gives us uh, one, okay? So, our smallest uh, scale division is 10 minus 0 all over number of divisions, which is 10. In such a case, we have one unit. So it means that if we to read, look at this scale, any small reading from here, like this is one unit, is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So one division here is equivalent to one unit. There is no unit there yet but just you understanding and observing the scale division we're talking about here. Okay.
So the real-life situation, Ebonge and Ako dipped their hands into water that has been heated for 10 minutes. Ebonge says water is hot while Ako says water is cold. Help Ebonge and Ako. The water has been heated for 10 minutes. One person puts his hands in the water and says it's hot. The other says it is cold. How can we help them? Have you ever experienced a scenario like that? Where one person can touch something that is supposed to be warmer or hot, and then you touch it, I don't feel so much uh, need to worry about it. But somebody says, no, it's burning. Okay? By the time we go to the end of this lesson, we must have acquired enough knowledge in order to be able to provide an informed explanation or to help Ako and Ibonge to settle their differences. Right? Let's move on. So we have some listening activities here. Look at this. This is a thermometer. And here, well, this is an instrument. Uh, this one, you know this instrument too. You know this one, okay? You can see this level here. We just were about scale division a while ago. And look at this one too. Look at the new level of the same instrument placed uh, in that substance there. Okay, so the thermometer below was dipped in warm water. What happened to the liquid in the thermometer? This thermometer that is here was dipped in warm water. Look at the level here and the level here. So the question is, what happened to the liquid in the thermometer? Secondly, why did this happen? Thirdly, what does the thermometer measure? What happened to the liquid thermometer? Why did it happen? And which quantity does a thermometer measure? Okay. So, uh, as a response for what happened, uh, the level of the liquid in the thermometer moved up. I pointed out to you and you saw it. Okay. Why did it happen? If you have not yet uh, learned in from one should, you are going to learn that when liquids are heated, their volume increase. Um, this one was heated too by being placed in warm water or hot water, and so the volume increase. And that increase in volume is indicated by the level increasing. I pointed out to you a while ago. So liquid expands when they are heated. And what or which quantity does the thermometer measure? It measures the temperature of the water. There are other facts about water, other quantities about water eh, that can be measured. But what the thermometer measures is the temperature. So now, um, what is temperature? What is temperature? A measure of how hot or cold a body is. Take me, please. Temperature is a measure of how hot or how cold a body is. You can repeat after me. Say temperature is a measure of how hot or how cold a substance is. Okay? The temperature of a body can be measured using an instrument called the thermometer. And the units of temperature is degrees Celsius. You have the Kelvin, you have the Fahrenheit. But there's one unit called the SI unit, which, which is uh, the Kelvin. So there is degrees Celsius, there's, there's the Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, and there's the Kelvin. Degree Celsius is not the SI unit. Kelvin is not the, is the SI unit. Degree Fahrenheit is not. Take notes. Most often, students will get confused. So temperature is often measured in degrees Celsius uh, or degree Fahrenheit. Uh, the SI unit of temperature is the Kelvin. We don't say degrees the Kelvin, no, we just say the Kelvin, okay? Uh, there are different types of thermometers, eh? like the ones that you use in the hospital. If you've ever been to the hospital and the doctor, either bring something to your ear or put something in your armpit. Okay? In the course of this lesson, we're going to see uh, some different types of thermometer. Take note, it measures temperature. So the diagram below shows the liquid and glass thermometer. You can see this. Okay? There's this nice uh, portion here. There is this level here. We looked at uh, something a while ago, scale division. 
and that's the scale. And if you look somewhere at the top here, then you can see very well, it shows degrees Celsius. So it shows that it's measuring something in degrees Celsius, and that's temperature. So that's a liquid in glass thermometer. So liquid in glass thermometers are made up of glass tube containing a liquid, can mercury, can also be alcohol. Eh? Then uh, you take the reading by inspecting the thermometer and uh, checking the level of the liquid eh? Like I showed you a while ago, if we just step back a bit in time, we notice that the, le the, the liquid level is here and corresponds to about uh, 19, okay? So, well, there is mercury here or alcohol that when it heated, the level rises. So you can read there, okay? So there are other types, eh? digital thermometers. There are some that uh, like the uh, liquid and glass thermometers, there are different types. There is the clinical thermometer, the ones that you use for you in the hospital, that they can put in your armpit. That's sometimes doctor flick like this. There's a normal laboratory thermometer that you don't have to flick. And they all have scales here. Eh? For the clinical thermometer to use it, they put in your armpit. Or there are some others that are digital that they can just bring close to your ear, even without touching it. And they hear ping, and when they look at the screen, they will see a value of temperature. So this is how it looks like. They just bring this uh, portion close to your ear. I don't know if this one they put in the armpit, but just bring close to your ear for digital thermometers. What it does is that it uh, indicates a reading on the screen here. Okay? So I've talked about the liquid and glass thermometer that can contain alcohol or mercury in it. We have talked also about the digital thermometer and I've said something about it. So uh, they have a temperature sensitive bulb and should be placed in contact with the body whose temperature is to be measured. So there are some that are placed in contact, there are others that are just brought very close to, okay? And uh, they read temperature. So uh, digital thermometer, they simply display the measured temperature and hence they're easier to read than the normal liquid in glass thermometers, okay? Um, so how do we measure temperature of a body using a liquid in glass thermometer? I've just uh, said some few things about that already. So to do that for a body, uh, to measure temperature of a body accurately, Using a liquid and glass thermometer, we follow some steps here, eh? and uh, it includes uh, placing the bulb of the thermometer in contact with the body whose temperature is to be measured, okay? To ensure that uh, the bulb uh, does not touch any other body, just the one that you want to measure the temperature, okay? Uh, I'll just uh, profit here to tell you that if you have to measure the temperature of your room using a normal laboratory thermometer, you don't, so uh, it's already in contact with the air. Just read it, okay? If you want to measure the temperature of water, you have to dip it in water. But if it's about the temperature of your room, uh, just expose the air, it's in contact with the air inside your room, and it will give you a reading. Wait on the top of the liquid in the thermometer is not moving up or down. Wait until it's stable, and then you can take your reading. So place it in contact, watch the liquid level either rise or fall until it is stable. Then you can take your reading. Then you should hold the thermometer up right with the top of the liquid at eye level to avoid uh, having wrong results. Eh? So if you observe this, if you put your eye here, you have a wrong reading. You still have a reading, eh? but that reading will, not, will be wrong. So to be sure that you are collecting the right reading, you're not misleading yourself, what uh, I want you to do is that you position your eye here, at eye, the same level, eye level, horizontal, with uh, the scale reading you want to, to take, okay? If you position yourself at your eye at this angle, you are also taking a wrong reading there. So just by observing what I'm doing here, you can know whether you are trying to have a right reading or a wrong reading. Don't blame anybody if you read wrongly, okay? I've just showed you. Okay, so look closely at the top of the liquid in the thermometer. The temperature mark closest to the level of the middle. 
of the meniscus is the temperature of uh, the body closest to the middle of the meniscus. I want you to remember that we we'll talk about meniscus, we're talking about the curved surface of liquids. I'm sure we have spoken about that in the, in, the, in the previous lessons, okay? Meniscus. So, oh, what value do we have here? If you look at this. Oh, we have this, as we just saw. This is, uh, I can see 20 here above, and they're just below. There are one, two, three, four divisions. So there's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I can see that the eye reading is at 19. But uh, we are trying to extract a section of this to bring here for you. So I can see very well. So this value here is 15. After 15, there is 16. After that, 17. After that, 18. After that, the one that is closest here is closest to to 19. That's the way that you, you take uh, your readings, please. So that gives you the uh, 19 degrees Celsius. Because if you look, as I said, you see a unit. So exercises, the diagram below shows a thermometer being used to measure the temperature of air inside a room. What value does the thermometer give for the temperature? So it's being used to measure the temperature of a room. And as I said, if you want to do that, you don't need to let it be. And then you read the temperature. So, okay. So here we have it. If you can see very well, you will notice that um, there's a liquid reservoir here. And uh, with any heating, level goes up. And I can look here and see that we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or that you have 0 and 10 and that there are 10 equal divisions between 0 and 10 so that from the previous calculation we did we see that the smallest scale division here is 1 so that each scale stands for one unit here so in that case we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so if you read properly you should uh, have nine degrees Celsius. Okay. So, the figure below shows a thermometer that uh, has been left outside in the shed on a hot day. What temperature reading does the thermometer uh, give to the nearest degree? To the nearest degree. So you observe, that is it has been placed outside on a hot day. So you observe here. First of all, when you look at it, try to observe the smallest scale division and then see how you can proceed to read. So we look at this one, which is the smallest unit of scale division. What is the equivalence of one scale division here? Is it one unit or is something else, okay? It's really important for you to get to know that. So, the diagram below shows the thermometer being used to measure the temperature of a room. What uh, value does the thermometer give for the temperature? I already uh, pointed out to you. So, this is an exaggerated uh, section. And that shows also just what I said. From five, we have uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So, the level of the liquid inside the thermometer lines up with the mark just below 10 degrees. Each mark represents an increment of one degree, so the thermometer is uh, reading a temperature of nine degrees Celsius. I explained to you, right? Take note, you can read correctly yourself, but make sure you position yourself to be able to uh, get the correct uh, scale uh, reading. Okay, smallest scale division. So the figure below shows the thermometer that has been left outside in the shed. Okay, we read the question. So that's it there. This one is equivalent to uh, 25. So we have 25 here to 30. The smallest scale division in this case should be 1 equally. So if that is 1, then it means uh, 1 division is equivalent to 1 degree Celsius. So after 25, we have uh, 26, 27, 
and it aligns with, uh, I think, 29 uh, degrees, okay? So, this is an exaggerated uh, portion of diagram that we're looking, we're looking at. So, the level of the liquid inside the thermometer lies between uh, 28 degrees and 29 degrees. So, the level is closer to 29 degrees. To a nearest degree, then, the thermometer reading is 29 degrees Celsius. Don't forget that each instrument you are using has a scale. It has units. So when you write, take the value, make sure to take the units equally. Uh, as our assignment for today, read uh, the thermometers given below and record the temperature. Okay? So let's get it. Can you see this? Which is the smallest scale? Or what is the smallest scale division here? We have done a number of them in the course of this lesson. Okay. And then the reading, scale division, reading. Now, for a real life situation, Ebong and Ako uh, dipped their hands into water that has been uh, heated for 10 minutes. Ebongo says water is hot, while Ako says water is cold. Now, have you acquired enough material or enough knowledge to provide a well-informed response to the challenge? So, a thermometer will give a correct reading than just their senses, their feelings. So to know if the water is hot or cold, a bonga and aqua have to measure its temperature using a thermometer, not just uh, their senses. With that, we have actually come to the end of this lesson. We made references from explaining physics, so uh, the GCSE edition by Stephen Popper, and uh, we use Osmar String Physics by Jagatesan, Govenda, and uh, Stephen Robinson. We also used nagua.com. Our next lesson is going to be on using information on products. Mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen